Have you ever wondered how your steak got to the table? How it was raised? The cost of goods? The chain of supply? While many people prefer to imagine the classic old McDonald's story, the reality is that raising animals for food has drastically changed and over the last half century, meat has gone corporate. Over the past 50 years, the meat industry has funneled in two directions. It's big business, but that business is now owned by only a handful of companies. The key players in the meat business are American conglomerates such as Tyson, JBS, and Cargill, Brazilian company BRF, and European company Vion, whose collective annual revenues average about $223 billion. Over the years, these companies have bought out smaller businesses and arranged a conglomerate of brands to handle all aspects of meat production. They control the global meat market, from processing and packaging to managing the world's meat supply chain. To give you an idea of how this breaks down, familiar beef brands like Five Star Beef, Blue Ribbon Angus Beef, and greener sounding brand Cedar River Farms Natural Beef are all owned by JBS. It means we need to sell it right, making sure that the customer is getting what they want, when they want it. Smithfield owns brands such as Nathan's Famous, Cook's, Eckrich, Healthy Ones, and Farmland. And food giant Cargill is owner to Shady Brook Farms, Angus Pride, Fairview Farms, and Sterling Silver. How did it all happen? Meat has been part of the human diet for 2.6 million years, but the rise of factory farming is still relatively new. Advancements of the American railroad system that occurred between the 1870s and the 1930s allowed the meat industry to grow rapidly. Here the entire herd will be loaded at one time and transported to market as a single expedited shipment. Trains made it possible to ship refrigerated meat across the country without worrying about spoilage. Livestock trains operating on fast schedules supply efficient transportation at a time when hours may mean profits. Meatpacking facilities streamline their processes, assigning one task per worker. It was no longer a task left to just butchers. Industrialization allowed the meat industry to scale up fast, and a global market emerged. In 1906, journalist Upton Sinclair's novel The Jungle exposed the unsanitary working conditions in the meatpacking industries of New York and Chicago. Laws could state that certain protocol must always be followed, but all the slaughterhouse has to do is make sure that things look good when the inspector stops by. The government initially dismissed the claims as intentionally misleading and false, but public pressure led to the passage of the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drug Act that year. Still, despite efforts to protect the quality of meat, large corporations began buying out small farm operations. Due to decreased competition, farmers were forced to conform to standards set by parent companies, leading family farms to accept lower prices while struggling to meet new standards for which animals to raise and how. Early industrial farms and increased commodification of animal bodies began to emerge in a bid to increase profits. Packing 20,000 chickens into a warehouse is more economical than purchasing enough land for them to roam free range. The 1948 short documentary film, The Chicken of Tomorrow, explores the history of the factory farmed egg and poultry industries. Chickens were bred to lay more than 10 times the eggs they would lay naturally. Breeders have achieved great results in boosting the egg output of the average hen. Today's hen averages 154 eggs per year. Birds were genetically engineered to have more meat on their bodies, with bigger breasts, wings, and legs for the sake of meat production. The chicken of tomorrow, a broad-breasted bird with bigger drumsticks, plumper thighs, and layers of white meat, like the wax model on the right. Farmers began fattening up cattle and injecting them with growth hormones to keep up with the demand for meat. In the 1960s, this type of factory farming became the norm. Scientists soon realized that there would be no way to feed the rapidly growing population while raising animals for meat the same way. The cattle industry has welcomed new nutritional developments that lead to improved quality beef and an opportunity for better profits. There simply wouldn't be enough land to meet the growing demand. Today, 99% of animal products in the U.S. come from factory farms. Animals are kept in windowless sheds, 
tens of thousands crammed into small spaces to keep up with production demands. And the world's appetite for meat hasn't slowed down. In 2018, Americans ate an average of 222.2 pounds of meat per person. Domestic meat production surpassed 1 billion pounds for the first time ever. People in industrial countries around the world eat an average of 176 pounds per person, according to World Watch data. According to the FAO, the world produced a record high of 335 million tons of meat in 2018. Federal funding has helped keep industrial animal agriculture alive. The U.S. government paid $38 billion in subsidies to the meat and dairy industries in 2016. Less than half of that was allocated for fruit and vegetable farmers. In his 2013 book, Meatonomics, author David Simon writes, Each year, American taxpayers dish out $38 billion to subsidize meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. To put this corporate welfare package in perspective, it's nearly half the total unemployment benefits paid by all 50 U.S. states to unemployed workers in 2012. Meat isn't cheap, though. Subsidies have made it become so readily available and affordable. You might say meat comes with hidden costs. The government helps keep costs for water, feed, and land low. There are also health-related costs. Animals are raised in ways that breed antibiotic-resistant diseases that go on to affect humans. The World Health Organization has warned that we're in a post-antibiotic era where something as benign as a scraped knee could be deadly because of the antibiotic resistance now rampant thanks to livestock production. Diets heavy in meat, dairy, and eggs have also been linked to a growing number of chronic health issues like heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and certain forms of cancer. The subsidies damage our country's health and increase the medical costs that will ultimately need to be paid to treat the effects of the obesity epidemic. A 2012 report from the U.S. Public Interest Research Group, a nonprofit consumer advocacy organization, concluded, taxpayers are paying for the privilege of making our country sick. And then there's the planet. Experts have identified animal agriculture as one of the chief drivers of climate change. In order to sustain a Western diet, we need to grow three times the amount of crops to feed animals raised for food than if we all just ate plants. While governments across the world have begun adopting plans to reduce carbon emissions in the wake of the Paris Agreement, the U.S. lags behind and is invested instead in protecting the meat and dairy industries. In states like Alabama and Iowa, Confined animal feeding operations, aka factory farms, are exempt from reporting their greenhouse gas emissions, despite reports that livestock production accounts for as much as 51% of all global greenhouse gas emissions. How much should meat, dairy, and eggs really cost? The average family would pay an additional $275 on their weekly grocery bill if consumers paid for the true cost of animal products. At Burger King, a box of 20 chicken nuggets costs just $5 and contains 870 calories. A standard meal at McDonald's consisting of a Big Mac, large fries, and a soda contains 1,350 calories, more than half of the average 2,000 calorie diet for only $6. But it's high in saturated fat, which has been linked to heart disease. Fast food is popular for a few reasons. It's fast, of course, but it's also cheap. And because it's calorie dense, flavorful, and you can find a restaurant just about anywhere you go, it's no surprise Americans and the world are addicted to fast food meals. The fast food industry, just like meat, eggs, and dairy, has been helped along by clever marketing efforts. But now with the Philly cheesesteak on a burger, I get all the love and hold the hate. Looks like you've learned to make great chicken. Only way to serve our customers right. Decades of advertising have cemented sayings like where's the beef in popular culture. We know it's a big fluffy Talk bun. Talk to the manager. It is the manager. Where's the beef? Even kids aren't immune. In some ways, they're more susceptible to marketing prowess. When I'm 10, I want to eat deluxe sandwiches just like you. That's pretty ambitious. Now at McDonald's, try our deluxe sandwiches with a grown-up taste and collect these fun Looney Tunes stuffed characters from the movie Space Jam. Many fast food restaurants associate their food with positivity, 
by offering toys with kids' meals that can inspire a lifelong relationship with unhealthy food. Disease Outbreaks According to the World Health Organization, an estimated 600 million people, nearly 1 in 10, fall ill each year, and an estimated 420,000 die as a result of eating contaminated food. When outbreaks happen, they're typically big, as the meat industry is dominated by large-scale producers, and contamination can affect millions and millions of pounds of animal products at a time. In 2018, JBS recalled 12 million pounds of beef due to a salmonella outbreak. So many of us have ground beef in our refrigerators and our freezers, and tonight the state health department confirms that beef linked to a West Valley plan has sickened 42 people across Arizona. And it's prompting the feds to expand the recall to a staggering 12 million pounds of beef. According to data provided by the CDC, it resulted in 246 cases of salmonella poisoning and 59 hospitalizations in 25 states. Thankfully, there were no deaths. There's also mad cow disease, also known as bovine spongiform encephalopathy, or BSE, a neurodegenerative disease that occurs in cattle that eventually leads to loss of all motor functions. The time span between infection and onset of symptoms is four to five years, so it can be tough to spot symptoms. A human version of mad cow disease, called variant Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, or VCJD, is believed to be passed on from eating beef contaminated with central nervous system tissue, such as the brain or spinal tissue. The first human case was reported in 1996. The new strain of the disease was identified in the CJD surveillance unit in Scotland. What was significant was that the victims were much younger than any previously known. These are the characteristic holes in the brain of a CJD victim, and this is the much greater damage caused by the new strain of the disease. VCJD causes damage to the brain over time, including tingling in the hands and feet, dementia, mobility issues, psychotic behavior, or coma. There have been a few outbreaks, mainly in the UK. Living close to a factory farm also negatively affects community health. In 2018, floodwaters from Hurricane Florence caused more damage to North Carolina hog farms in more than two decades. It resulted not only in the death of more than 5,000 animals, but several dozen waste lagoons overflowed, contaminating the waterways. And there are still 62 of these factory swine operations storing more than 200 million gallons of animal waste generated each year. The spilled waste put residents at risk for coming into contact with salmonella, insecticides, and pharmaceuticals. The World Health Organization also classifies red and processed meat as carcinogens, which goes against the long history of U.S. lobby groups pushing for the promotion of meat consumption. Industry Influences the meat lobby is one of the most influential groups in Washington. In 2014, lobbyists spent more than $4 million lobbying Congress. Gun control lobbyists spent less than half that amount. The groups aim to protect the meat industry by seeking government support, subsidies, and tax regulations over production and processing. Meat and eggs help the body grow and make it strong. Meat is good for you, and there are many kinds. Public documents such as the USDA's Food Guide are heavily influenced by meat lobbyists. In 1991, the food pyramid was redone to emphasize more meat and dairy consumption. A New York University Department of Nutrition peer-reviewed paper notes that federal dietary advice has evolved from decrease your consumption of meat to have two or three daily servings. This pressure from the animal agriculture industry dates back to the 1970s. In U.S. public schools, it's required to give children milk at lunchtime. The dairy industry recently revitalized its Got Milk campaign in order to encourage kids to drink more milk, as sales of dairy-free milk are quickly outpacing traditional dairy products. Thanks, Carla. Well, gotta run. I got scouts straight into Taekwondo. So slammed today. Later. Milk, because being a kid is tough. Several agriculture-heavy states have implemented ag-gag laws, which punish whistleblowers for exposing the violence within the industry via video and audio footage. According to Mercy for Animals, seven states currently have ag-gag laws in place. Missouri, Arkansas, Montana, Iowa, Kansas, 
North Dakota, and North Carolina, 28 states total, have attempted to pass laws. Meat and dairy lobbyists are now turning their attention to plant-based meat. According to Reason.com, the U.S. Cattlemen's Association is appalled that new forms of protein are being sold under names such as Beyond Beef and Impossible Burger. In times of crisis, lobbying increases. Craig Hoffman, a government affairs lobbyist for Public Citizen, said, When policy problems arise, special interests will double down on their lobbying campaigns. The group is now lobbying to ban words such as meat, burger, or beef on plant-based products due to the latter's increased market share. Lobbyists are now leveraging lawmakers to stifle the rising vegan meat market. Mississippi passed a law supported by the state's Cattlemen's Association, preventing vegan meat, burgers, and sausages, and more, from being called meat, claiming that it will avoid confusing consumers. The Plant-Based Foods Association, the only trade organization for vegan brands and vegan food companies, filed a lawsuit to stop the ban, calling the law a violation of First Amendment rights. It's really the consumers that are going to lose out by having to change these words in a way that they won't understand, said Daniel Stackman, founder of plant-based meat brand Upton's Naturals and PBFA member. This is really a protectionist move on the part of the meat industry to do whatever they can to try to squash um, our progress. A similar law was just passed in Arkansas and is already receiving pushback from groups, including the American Civil Liberties Union, for being unconstitutional. The group filed a lawsuit on behalf of old-school vegan brand Tofurky. The act is a restriction on commercial speech that prevents companies from sharing truthful and non-misleading information about their products, says the lawsuit. It does nothing to protect the public from potentially misleading information. Instead, it creates consumer confusion, where none existed before, in order to impede competition. Arkansas, Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Wyoming have all introduced similar laws. These instances aren't the first time the meat and dairy industries have sought to restrict plant-based alternatives in the market. In the late 1800s, dairy lobbyists pushed the Margarine Act, which bogged manufacturers down with a restrictive tax and prohibitive licensing fees. Some states even banned its sale outright. Governor Lucius Hubbard of Minnesota called the vegetable-based oil spread an abomination of depraved human genius. Laws in the early 1900s called for margarine to be dyed pink to avoid confusion with butter, but they were overturned by the Supreme Court on the grounds that it's illegal to enforce the adulteration of food. Lobbyists have also come for dairy-free ice cream. The 1951 ice cream Chillzert was seized by the USDA, which claimed it should be labeled imitation chocolate dessert. The brand fought back, state by state, and won the right to label its confection ice cream. A changing economy. While animal agriculture lobbyists push for restrictive labeling laws, changes are happening in the $90 billion meat business. One of the biggest disruptors is California-based brand Beyond Meat. It became the first vegan meat brand to go public earlier this year, resulting in the biggest first-day IPO in nearly two decades. The company is known for its realistic bleeding burger, the Beyond Burger. We're trying to have meat eaters eat Beyond Meat because that's how we're going to change the world. Which is available at Carl's Jr., Del Taco. It tastes like meat. It's awesome. Even though I'm a meathead, I would totally eat these all day. a w Canada and Tim Hortons. Its new vegan breakfast sausage launched in NYC Duncan locations in July with plans to go national. They're even handing out free samples of Beyond Meat um, egg and cheese sandwiches to everybody who walks in. They're like super pumped about the rollout and everything. Duncan CEO David Hoffman spoke to CNBC. We co-created something that was very proprietary just for Duncan. We worked and we did that together and uh, hey look, I think this is going to be a partnership for years to come. Beyond Meat also had a significant impact on how vegan meat is marketed. I think where we start as a company is a recognition that we are in the business of enabling people to continue to eat what they love, but we believe that it can be a transition from a animal-based meat to a plant-based meat. The Beyond Burger was the first plant-based meat to be sold along traditional beef in grocery stores. This paved the way for the placement of other brands to market in the meat case. The brand hopes to expand its product lineup to include vegan bacon and steak. Due to its success, 
Analysts predict that the vegan meat market could be worth $41 billion within the next decade. Impossible Foods is making similar strides. The Bay Area brand's plant-based meat is available in mainstream restaurant chains, including White Castle, the Mexican-inspired QDOBA, Umami Burger, and at Burger King as a Whopper option. If it's not beef, I don't want it. First bite, I would know the difference between beef and whatever else you have. Little do they know, their Whopper patty was actually made from plants. Wait, plant what, what are you talking about? No animals, just plants. The brand has raised more than $750 million and has a growing list of celebrity supporters, including Jay-Z, Katy Perry, Jaden Smith, and Serena Williams. Non-vegan brands are also staking a claim in the burgeoning plant-based meat market. Nestle, the world's largest food company, is turning its attention to creating new vegan products. It recently launched the Incredible Burger under its Garden Gourmet brand in Europe. The realistic plant-based patty is now available in McDonald's Germany and Israel, with plans to potentially expand distribution to other countries. It is currently looking into developing vegan chicken, sausage, and bacon. CEO Mark Schneider told CNBC. So uh, we are deeply interested in the plant-based uh, food uh, area. I think we have a lot to show in this area, and this was one of the key points. Smithfield, the world's largest pork producer, recently announced its first vegan range. Called Pure Farmland, the new line mimics the realistic look and texture of the Beyond Burger, featuring burgers, meatballs, breakfast patties, and ground beef. Smithfield Foods has come under fire for its hog farms. Undercover drone footage in 2014 exposed massive manure lagoon runoff linked to widespread air and water pollution in North Carolina. But a shift toward the burgeoning vegan meat category could help the brand pivot away from questionable practices. Maple Leaf Foods, Canada's largest packaged meat company, acquired vegan brands Light Life Foods and Field Roast in 2017 claiming that it plans to become a leader of sustainable protein. Earlier this year, Lightlife launched vegan burgers, sausages, and ground beef to help meet the rising demand for plant-based food. You expect them to be juicy and delicious. What you may not expect is that the new Lightlife burger is made from plants. Poultry giant Tyson Foods was initially an investor in Beyond Meat. It sold its stake ahead of Beyond Meat's IPO and launched its own range of plant-based protein blended with real meat. It's no laughing matter today, given the industry's meteoric rise in recent years, said a Tyson Foods senior strategist. Although the number of vegans has risen by little, an increasing number of consumers are turning to plant-based meat due to health, environmental, and animal rights concerns. Brands are ramping up production, Maple Leaf Foods will open a $310 million plant-based protein factory, the largest in the United States. It is currently being built to make light life and field roast vegan meat. Beyond Meat has two facilities in the U.S. and announced its first European facility earlier this year. In the U.K., entrepreneur and V-Bytes founder Heather Mills will open a 385,000 square foot plant-based valley to manufacture vegan meat. The factory was sitting empty for two years. It will bring more jobs to the region, and we can incubate all of our V-Bytes Ventures investments to help them scale up, manufacture, distribute, and sell in 24 countries around the world," Mills said. Finnebroke Artisan, the UK's leading premium sausage producer, invested £3 million in a dedicated meat-free factory in Ireland last January. Increased availability may mean that the price of vegan protein will soon achieve parity with traditional meat. Liz Specht, PhD, a senior scientist at the Good Food Institute, said, Industrial animal agriculture has been operating and optimizing at a global scale for decades, yet it is still inherently more efficient to make meat directly from plants, rather than feeding our crops to animals and then eating a part of the animal. It's all but inevitable that the plant-based meat industry will eventually be cost-competitive with conventional meat. A large-scale European plant-based protein biorefinery called Plenitude may make that happen. The project, led by 10 partners including biotech company 3F Bio, European meat giant ABP Foods, and veggie meat brand Vivera, will produce vegan protein for food from low-cost crops. The Ghent-based factory will produce 16,000 tons of protein per year to start, 
but could potentially be scaled up to 50,000 tons annually. The refined plant-based protein will be available to companies that make vegan meat. If successful, similar facilities will open across Europe, potentially bringing down the cost of vegan food. Global experts in governments and bodies, such as the UN and the FAO, all consistently highlight the need to reduce the reliance on protein from livestock, said 3F Bio CEO Jim Laird. From an environmental perspective, this is one of the crises of our time. Canada's prairie provinces also seek to be a leader in plant-based protein. The nation invested $153 million in the protein industry's Canada Supercluster last year. Superclusters are areas of high business activity, hotbeds of innovation, where people come together, ideas are born, and the best companies grow. Which will process protein from peas and beans. So, does meat have a future? Yes and no. The meat of yesterday, wrought with ethical, economical, and ecological issues is facing extinction. But in its wake is the rise of Protein 2.0, a recent report by multinational investment bank UBS Group AG predicted that the vegan meat market will be worth $85 billion by 2030. Global consultancy firm AT Carney analyzed the market too and predicts that by 2040, all meat will be vegan. Experts say that over the past few years, vegan food has been propelled from niche markets into the mainstream. Brands like Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods are proving that you can have meat without the animal and their main customer, meat eaters, agree. That's it for today. What are your thoughts on meatonomics? Let us know in the comments. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. New videos every Tuesday and Friday.